what I think is more fascinating here, and it's kind of a bigger picture, Big East topic, is that UConn went all in on basketball, right? They went to the AAC because they were chasing that bag. They were chasing the football money. They were doing all, the thing that all of the teams – uh, that were basketball only, or that that were basketball schools in the Big East in that first breakup, they 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 chased the bag, they chased the money, and it right. didn't work. And they came back to the Big East and they went all in on basketball. And the Big East Conference overall has gone all in on basketball. And I think over the course of not only this season, but the last like three weeks of the off season, I don't know if there's been a a league that has had. More hype, more intrigue, more interest than what has happened in the Big East, who has gone all in on basketball. While everybody else is is leaning into football, they're trying to become the basketball conference, and it's working. And uh, I'm just curious, like, where, where do you – are you guys a fan? I, I love it. Are you guys a fan of that? Do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's it's something that is sustainable in the long term? I, I just – I. I love the idea of having a league that is built around just basketball and only basketball and then adding Rick Patino to it and adding the Georgetown versus Providence intrigue and you know adding the uh, what could eventually be a Seton Hall versus St. John's kind of an intrigue. Um I don't know. I think it's a great thing. Fanta, we'll go to you first on that. Well, look at the names that want to be part of it. Look at some of the coaches who have entered the league. Because yeah, you're you're getting nice offers, but you have offers from all over and these are guys that that are saying, yeah, I, you know, I'll I'll go and be part of the Big East. Think about this, guys. This comes from Paul Frischner, who does a great job covering the Big East. He covers Xavier quite a bit. Big Paul. He said, he said this uh, last night. Entering 2021-22, Big East coaches had a combined 56 NCAA tournament wins. Jay Wright had 30 of those. Entering this upcoming season, 2023-24, Big East coaches have a combined 130 NCAA tournament wins. That is close to a 100 win margin that's been created. And Jay Wright retired. That's the wildest part about this. Mm -hmm. When Jay Wright retires, the instant thought is, how does the Big East carry its weight? How do they continue to be on the level that they've been on, at least having one of the elite? Well, Jay Wright retires. And it's almost like everybody else saw that as here's our opportunity. Here's our opportunity. We've got to we got to capitalize. Guess what? Everybody had the same idea for the most part. Mm -hmm. And this league has made massive moves in the last year. And yeah, I think that Sean Miller says, I'm really happy in this basketball league. I get to be the mayor. I get to be the king of the hill and savior. Shaka Smart is totally being the best version of himself at Marquette. And T.O., you could speak to that, just how comfortable he is there, yeah. how much how much he loves it. Greg McDermott was a name. He was a name that, that people were talking about that could make a move. But talking with Max Staff, now they made a deep tournament run, so things change. But, like, you talk with Max Staff, and, the, and they say he he loves being the guy, too, in Omaha. He loves being the guy that, that people talk to and love. So it's this is a league that... The programs who are in it, basketball's not just a part of them. It's the fabric of the university's DNA. Mm. And now all of that investment has led to success. And timing is everything, right? You've got to be able to have groups of teams also win. Because if the Big East has five NCAA tournament teams, but four are out by the end of the first week, and we're saying, yeah, good league intriguing league made additions that's the thing while rick patino was coming to st john's while ed cooley was moving within the conference which is a that's the most massive off-season coaching move we've seen because of the amount of ripple effect it's had in the league and bad blood it has established providence and georgetown now genuinely hate one another just check twitter to find that out <laughs> but the last thing is the league was collecting tournament wins the league earned itself. You said, Rob, is this sustainable? It's sustainable if you win in March. And the league collected well over $30 million for itself off of this NCAA tournament and had two teams in regional finals, was this close to having two in the final four with Creighton, but they won. They won. You know what the very other part of it level. is not the, the real quick, the money part, Fana. Um, you don't have to to reveal any inside info on this one, but that TV deal is coming up. 
and all of the intrigue and all of the uh, the buzz, all the people paying attention. You want to know how to keep this thing really sustainable? Add a add, add an extra ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent on that that television deal, right? Bump it up a little bit. Get a little bit more money. Make some more money. Get these schools more money coming into their pockets, into their programs. That's, how many? How many? How many years are left on that Fox deal? Two, right? Two years. I'd be trying right now. Mm-hmm. If I were Val, yeah, and not just right now. You say just look at look at look at the numbers that we're going to get. Look at the attention that we're going to get. Look at the boost that you're going to get for next season because you know it's going to be there. The growth you know, is going to be there. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. It's going to be there. It's going to happen, and it is happening because you strike when the iron's hot, and the iron is red hot. But I just think I think it's really interesting that the iron is scalding hot because a year ago at this time, there was a high level of uncertainty around what this league would be. Even mm-hmm. coming into this season, we were like, yeah, we'll see. And honestly, the league had a true bottom. It did. I mean, there, there were some bad teams in this league this year. Uh, I know you're laughing, but but yeah. Well, I'm I'm just laughing because the team that you, both of you guys predicted would be the breakout team in this conference is the team that you're referring to. Georgetown, the DePaul Blue Demons. Oh well, I don't know if Terrence. <laughs> hey, they hey they they uh they made it to the Big East quarters. They came very damn close to making it to the semifinals. Hey, but they were. Yo, I was I was telling I was, I was telling a story to someone about you the other day, and they were like, "What?" Huh? Does CL really work that hard? I know. I was like, listen, I was on the beach in August, right? On family vacation. And I get a text to my group chat with T.O. and Fanta. And what it says is, you ever watch film on DePaul's Caleb Murphy? That dude's a pro. And I I stand by that. In August, my man is watching film and texting people about a DePaul basketball player. And you want to ask him, T.O. Crimes? That's that's teal right there i'm hey if that kid doesn't get hurt their season's different yeah. <laughs> if yeah, Angenda doesn't like, get hurt their season's different i feel like they've been saying that saying that for quite some time well i don't the know I, i'm thought, not privy to that i'm not privy I, to that but, but I, the but last thought on the big east the last yeah. thought on the big east that i have is this you know you know in, in college hoops everybody knows that guy that's like well yeah it's not the same like you know uh, i remember 2001 like i watched every weekend you know there there are those people out there. Like, doesn't the Big East remind you of your of your fandom as a child, or you know what I mean? Like, the Big East is old school. It is, again, hoops programs that are fully invested in hoops, and it 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 it's just it's like that bar at the corner where you know what you're gonna get. Well, you it's know what it is. You know what it's it is, John. Lunch, it's it's, a, it's the Big East is a lunch pail league. Yep. Yes. You better bring your lunch pail because it doesn't matter who you're playing on a given night. Like if no. you don't bring it, you're going to get one, you're going to get beat up. Two, emotionally you will just get driven into the floor. You better bring your lunch pail. Yep. And everybody it's not, knows your it's name. not just that. It's not just that. Like you have you you have the big programs in the SEC and the Big 10 and the Big 12 that are continuing to grow, right? And are continuing to drive more of a basketball fan base presence. Like Auburn fans I've been really, really good, not just for Field of 68, but there's like a bigger fan base than I think people realize. Same with Alabama fans, same with Texas Tech fans, same with Purdue fans, right? You have all these people that are kind of, as their programs are kind of growing to a level that has been that is unprecedented, you have a bunch of new fans. They tend to be college kids or recent grads that still love their school and love their program. Yeah. With the Big East, specifically programs like Georgetown. Programs like St. John's, programs like UConn, programs like Providence. There's a level of like, there's older fans there, right? There's a different generation of fans that love those schools and love those programs and identify with those programs because they were good when they fell in love with the sport in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s. So you're not just adding fans. You're not just creating a different dynamic. You are bringing in people that maybe wouldn't be watching college basketball otherwise. It's like a different demographic right and and that's just that is a good thing for college basketball overall is that you're bringing in people that fell in love with the sport in a certain era that maybe are like oh wow georgetown and st john's we're gonna have that on big fox and it's gonna be a game between two potentially top 25 teams when was the last time that happened that is a great thing for college basketball point blank period and and i'm very happy to see uh the big east getting there let me ask you this to 
Is the Big East now the best basketball conference in college basketball? Yeah. Results-based, yeah, it is right now. UConn won the national championship. Marquette's top five in the country going into next year. Yep. It, right now, it is. 11 teams, 10 of which will be really, really good next year. And when I say really good, not really, really good, I think Seton Hall will see what happens there. But, like, I think DePaul's the only one that's just kind of bringing up the rear. But, like, and Butler. I got to see what I got to see. So, so sorry. Butler's so, got to prove it to me. Butler's got to prove it to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. One through nine. One through nine, that is a league that, um, <laughs> No days off. There, there, are, there aren't there are three or four teams at the bottom that, that you just have to walk over. Yeah, and the Big 12 will learn, could learn this. It, there's two sides of the coin, right? You want more teams. It elevates potentially the amount of teams you can get in the NCAA tournament. But uh, sometimes more teams can equal some teams that bring your weight down a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the Big 12's adding quality programs. It will be interesting to see how the, how the new look uh, Big 12, particularly this season, right? Because you still have Oklahoma and Texas as a part of the league. So it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out. But you asked the question, is the Big East the best basketball league in college basketball? The question, the answer to that question is yes. Yes. Because when you look at the the, the biggest thing to me, it's a league that has always been defined by high-level, personality-driven coaches. Mm. Look at the coaching group. Look at the NCAA tournament wins. Mm -hmm. The fact that in a game between St. John's and Xavier, let's be honest, the past decade, St. John's and Xavier playing was like, eh, it's okay. Like, okay, Big East game. The fact that that's going to be Rick Pitino versus Sean Miller, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Now I have to watch the game. Yep. Yeah. Because and it's not just the coaching matchups. It's because you know those dudes are going to make those teams be good. Like St. John's is going to be good. They're going to be a tournament team. I'll, I will. I will. Uh, I'm not going to bet my life savings, but I, I I feel very comfortable about saying that St. John's will be a tournament team next year. I think I feel very comfortable in saying that Xavier is going to find a way to be competitive at the top of the Big oh, East yeah. next year. Right? They'll be a top 25 team. I feel very comfortable saying that within three years, Georgetown is going to be a top 25 team, if not next season. Look at the pieces that they're adding. Look at the pieces that they are uh, still being connected with. Providence? Kim's got, that, Kim, Kim's got that thing going, man. Like, not only like Devin Carter, I think he'll play in the NBA. Bryce Hopkins, I think he'll play in the NBA. He's very good. They're still linked with some big name transfers that are in the portal right now. And watch out for Jaden Pierre. Even though he couldn't beat Kim one on one. To be able to get his uh his 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 full release, he's going to be very 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 good. I know Kimmy's high on that dude. Big personality, got, big personality that kid. It, and yeah, they got Garway Jewel. Providence is cooking. I mean, they they have it cooking. They are going to be yep a top twenty five potential team next season. All right, so let me so, let me ask. I, you I just I, love. Can I can I throw one yeah, more? Ahead, ahead, the, the coaching dynamic between like when St. John's an old school kind of. How do I do that? Say this eloquently, like old Rick Pitino, hair slick back, big time suit, mm-hmm. new age Kim English comes in to a place where Pitino was at. He's getting all these kids. He's playing them one on one for their eligibility and like all that shit. Like, there's just there's so many cool yes. dynamics to the league, and so like it's a guys, it's a it's a story writer's dream league. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's a story writer's dream league. The focus is on what it needs to be focused on. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Yep. I can't Don't forget wait. Forget about Villanova either. Yeah, who got a couple of good ones. Villanova. Who got a good one? TJ TJ Bomba. Bomba. Pretty, pretty good player. Pretty good player. Yeah. Good player, good addition. Uh, and they got Justin Moore back, which is probably the single most important thing that they could have done. 